Apple spooks the markets, more coronavirus fears, and the Fed's meeting notes left investors optimistic. This is the Civil Reports Weekly Review where we take a look at the headlines that move the markets during the week and all things investment related. On Monday, the markets were closed in observance of President's Day. On Tuesday, the markets were mixed after the three-day break. The Dow closed down 165 points, the S&P closed down 9 points, and the Nasdaq closed up a point. One of the major stories that weighed on the markets was Apple announcing they would miss sales estimates due to the outbreak of the coronavirus. The company had to close stores in China for a period of time due to the virus and thought best to prepare Wall Street for a shaky quarter. The stock sold off on the news, and analysts believe that the sell-off could hit other tech stocks as well. But Tesla helped prop up the Nasdaq on the day. Tesla rose 7% off the back of a price target upgrade. Nike overalled its C-suite on Tuesday, naming a new COO and CFO. And if you've ever considered being an influencer, it might not be a bad choice. Sylvia Jablonski, a managing director at Direxion, believes that the spend on influencer marketing will increase from $8 billion to $15 billion in a couple of years. In earnings news, Walmart reported an EPS miss by $0.06, cents, but reported revenue that was in line with analyst estimates at $141.7 billion. Walmart missed comparable sales estimates. Comparable sales rose 1.9% in the quarter, lower than the 2.4% that was expected. The stock was still up over 1% on the day. And Groupon stock halted trading during the day. The stock dropped 25% after it reported an EPS miss by $0.08 cents and a revenue miss by $92 million. The company reported it plans to exit the goods category and focus more on local experiences. On Wednesday, all markets closed up. The Dow closed up 115 points, the S&P closed up 15 points, and the Nasdaq closed up 84 points. The minutes from the Fed's January meeting were available and revealed that the Fed believed the U.S. economy appeared stronger than expected in late January. The report helped push the markets up on the day. NVIDIA had a big day, closing up 6%. The move was sparked by an analyst at Bernstein upgrading NVIDIA's price target to $360 per share. Tesla continued to move up, closing over $900 per share on the day. In earnings news, Garmin reported an EPS beat by $0.24 and a revenue beat by $90 million. Garmin saw a 34% year-over-year increase in fitness revenue and a 22% increase year-over-year in their aviation and marine division revenue. Bosch Health reported an EPS miss by a penny but did beat revenue estimates by $20 million. The company grew revenue by 9% year-over-year and saw big revenue growth from Salix. On Thursday, all three markets pulled back. The Dow closed down 128 points, the S&P closed down 12 points, and the Nasdaq closed down 66 points. Losses were a lot steeper earlier in the day, but the markets were able to battle back. The spread of the coronavirus continued to weigh on the markets, as more than 75,000 people have been diagnosed with the virus and over 2,100 deaths have been attributed to the virus. In other news, Morgan Stanley announced that it will buy E-Trade for $13 billion. Combined, the company will have $3.1 trillion in client assets and 8.2 million retail client relationships and accounts. E-Trade stock jumped 21% on the announcement. In earnings news, Domino's reported an EPS beat by $0.16 cents and a revenue beat by $20 million. Domino's reported that comparable U.S. store sales increased by 3.9% and comparable sales at franchise locations increased by 3.3% during the quarter. Domino's also announced a 20% increase to its quarterly dividend. Dropbox reported an EPS beat by $0.02 cents and a revenue beat by $2.6 million. Dropbox was able to grow its paying customers in the quarter and average revenue per customer of $125 beat the estimate of $119. On Friday, the three major markets all closed down on the day. The Dow closed down 227 points, the S&P closed down 35 points, and the Nasdaq closed down 174 points. The drop in the markets was initiated by the U.S. Purchasing Managers Index, which fell below expectations and into contraction territory in February. The coronavirus outbreak hit the travel and tourism industries pretty hard, which led to a slump in the U.S. service sector and pulled down the Purchasing Managers Index. The PMI came in at 49.6 for February, which was well below January's number of 53.3. Overall, the Dow, the S&P 500, and the Nasdaq closed down on the week. Although the market started off hot at the beginning of the week, Thursday and Friday brought the markets into negative territory and brought the Dow back below 29,000. In other news, Wells Fargo agreed to pay a $3 billion settlement for their fake account scandal, where bankers were opening accounts in customers' names without their knowledge or permission. Deer & Co. reported earnings, the company beat EPS estimates by $0.37 cents and revenue estimates by $360 million. Worldwide net sales fell 4% year-over-year for the company, but Deer gave a revenue outlook of $2.7 to $3.1 billion, which was in line with analyst estimates. This week in crypto, there was news that Shopify will join the Libra Association, replacing Vodafone, who dropped out to develop their own digital payment system. In pricing news, the four major cryptos that we follow all pulled back during the week. 
Bitcoin fell below $10,000 and was trading at 9691 at the time of this recording. Ethereum fell almost 7% and was trading at $264.04. Litecoin lost 11% of its value during the week and was trading at $73.11. And Ripple was trading at $0.27, cents, down 18% from last week. Crude oil closed the week out at $53.39 per barrel, up 2.5% from last week. A big winner for the week was Stamps.com, STMP. The stock rose 97% during the week following a blowout earnings call. A big loser for the week was Tivity Health, TVTY, parent company of Nutrisystem. The stock was down 47% on the week from an earnings miss. That's it for this week's market review. If you want to dig deeper into the headlines we covered, the links to the stories are in the description below. And a link to sign up to our weekend article in focus is also in the description below. Thanks again for checking out the Silver Reports Market Review. This channel is dedicated to anyone who wants to start investing but doesn't know how or where to start. If you have any questions, ask in the comment section, like and subscribe, and may your next investment be your best investment. See you next week.